Welcome to Chandwell. In this series, we are following my progress as I build a large Victorian hotel to go behind my station. I've shown the inspiration in Bradford and my planning process. In the last video, we saw the station entrance on the concourse. In this video, I'm going to show how I built the rest of that part of the building. It took me four attempts to get the L-shaped hipped roof just right. So let's get on with part five, fourth time lucky for this roof. In my mock-up, this building was two buildings side by side. I made a change though, to make the first building L-shaped. I think that this will make the roof more interesting and it will open up the rear yard for me to add a little extra detail. As a result, the two buildings overlapped and became one building with some challenging overlapping components. I made adjustments to my design in Inkscape and I realigned the windows. I arranged outlines of the components so they all fit onto one A4 label and I stuck this to one millimetre grey board. I cut each component, taking care to work from the outside of the sheet to the inside. I find that this makes cutting easier because the knife isn't having to plough through the middle of dense card. I always do test fits at every stage of the build. Holding the pieces together with my York magnetic mates, I check that the building is going to fit. My plan is to have the back building a few millimetres off the back scene itself to enhance the sense of depth and I think that this should be just about right. This part of the building has windows with slightly arched tops. I cut the arch freehand using several light strokes of the scalpel. At one millimetre thick, this card is harder to cut than the half millimetre I used for the previous parts of the building. Once the arches were done, I cut the rest using my steel rule. Because this is just a base layer, I overcut the corners by half a millimetre, and then redo the corners by hand so that once the card drops out, it doesn't leave those little fluffy bits in the corners. With all the parts cut out, it's time to cover them in texture and arrange into something that looks like a building. Once the components were covered in texture and their window frames added, I used the magnetic mates and some PVA to glue the walls together at right angles. It takes some time to make sure that the edges are all properly aligned and even. I used a couple of F-clamps to hold the wall together while I made tiny adjustments. This is the benefit of using normal PVA for this kind of thing. You get quite a long time to slide the pieces around before the glue grips hard and causes tears. I did find that these clamps caused the wider wall to bow slightly, so I took these off again as soon as I had everything arranged right. While the walls were being held together with the magnetic mates, I used the waste card from the windows as little right angled supports for the walls. This join down here will be underground level, so it was a good way to add strength to the join where these two walls meet. With the four outer walls made, I slotted the gable of the taller building into its position on the front wall. By carefully working out the measurements beforehand in Inkscape, I knew that this would all fit and not leave any annoying overhangs or gaps. I added this piece of the building standing upright as a way to try and get it perpendicular with the other walls. Although still held together with clamps, I think it's starting to look good. Using my quick and easy no maths approach to hipped roofs, I cut 13 bits of card which I hoped would slot together into the L-shaped hipped roof that I was already really excited about. I started by gluing the ends of the two hips together to act as a support for the roof sides and other ends. Onto these, I stuck the triangular parts of the roof. The long side was next. I needed a little slot in the triangle underneath so that the shorter part aligned properly. Next. I slid the smaller triangular opponent into place. This left me with the two parts of the other long side, which thankfully just dropped into place. The success or otherwise of this whole hotel project will depend on the way I managed to get the complex roof to look. I was really pleased and excited that I had got this element right first time, so I went to put it on the building. It looked good, but something was not quite right. I spotted this 4mm gap where the roof didn't meet the taller wall. I couldn't understand how this could have happened and it stumped me for quite a while. Compared to the card mock-up, it all fit exactly. What had gone wrong? It was confusing. I realised eventually that when I rearranged the windows, I had moved the narrower building 4mm to the left. I'd already drawn the components for the roof and I completely forgot to redraw them to fit the new shape of the building. Oops. At this point though, I also realised that the roof should have a slight overhang to cover the gutters and other elements at the top of the wall. So I went back to Inkscape and I drew the components again. You'll see that I start with a single triangle and then just add and remove rectangles to make all the other shapes. I finally adjust the heights of the components so that they all meet up when angled on their supports. 
I've described this method in the video I've linked to at the end and the same maths free approach works if you only have a pencil and a ruler. If you'd like a slower walk through how I made this roof, please let me know in the comments below. With the new components cut out, I tried for a second time. This one was better, but the overhang was too wide on the narrower building and I still managed to not get it overhanging the front properly here. I don't know how I managed that. I tried a third one and I still wasn't happy. It was time to change my approach. I went back to the original approach, but with the measurement fixed and a slightly steeper roof pitch to match the pitch of the taller building. This time, I constructed the roof directly onto the top of the building. My thinking was that any adjustments would become apparent immediately, but thankfully this was not necessary. It fit perfectly. I used electrical tape to hold the parts in place while the glue did its thing. I changed the original design by changing the large triangle for a sliver of card that would fill the smallest part of the roof. I was really happy that this just dropped into place and filled the remaining gap perfectly. To add the overhang, I printed the same components again, only this time with a 1.5mm extension to the edges which needed to overhang the walls. I stuck these to serial packet. On a test fit, it definitely looked like I'd cracked this issue covered the roof in PVA and just dropped the serial packet parts into place. Once done, I had a well joined up roof with guidelines for the tiles that all aligned and I was really happy at last. I'll save showing the tiling of the roof for another time, so fast forward almost 4 more hours and the building looks absolutely wonderful in situ beside the station. As I record this, it is exactly 50 days since I started this hotel project. This episode covers 16 and a quarter hours of work. I used more materials than in my previous episodes too, and the four attempts at the roof added unnecessary waste. The total cost of the build has now broken the five pounds barrier, and is now five pounds and six pence. This part of the building is almost complete. If you're enjoying this series, please give a thumbs up to this video. This encourages me to continue making the videos and helps others on YouTube find them too. In the next episode, I'll be showing the little bits of detail which will complete this part of the hotel. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.